Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I'm your host Stan Rattan and this is the Blue Collar Wine Program where my goal is to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. And, well, summer solstice has come and gone and uh, we did a whole bunch of reviews of white so, you know, I thought I'd just switch it up a little bit. In fact, I'm going to get a little bit weird today. I'm doing two from Portugal and one from Washington State. I have no idea why I'm doing that. I'm just going to do it. But the idea is, you know, kind of what would you drink while you're barbecuing steaks, hamburgers, eggplant, if you're a vegan, whatever it is. What is a nice red to just kind of have with those meals, with hot dogs, whatever you're doing out in the backyard, having a picnic, whatever it is. What kind of good reds are there out there? Well, I don't think there's any better place to go than Portugal. The wines are ridiculously inexpensive for the quality that you get. And today we're going to do two from the Esparero Winery in uh, Alentejo, Portugal. I'm going to Portugal in the first uh, week, of, you know, first part of September. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about going there and checking it out. Never been there before. I'm sure I'll bring along the camera. We'll do some couple of YouTube videos while we're there. It's going to be fun. So let's get started right off the bat with the Esperero uh, 2012 Alondra Red. And excuse me, I forgot. I put the notes for what the grapes are in the varietal. It is Moretto, Castileo, and Trincadera. Probably most of you are not familiar with those grape varietals. There are a ton in Portugal, you know, that's part of the um, Solemn Sommelier exam. You have to know some of those things. Ridiculous. It even gets harder when you hit Italy. Spain isn't too bad. Portugal has some very interesting great varietals. We reviewed this white on uh, a couple episodes ago. By the way, I hope you watched the Matt Loso interview I did at Mike's Wine Bar and Cafe. It was a great um, interview. He's a head winemaker for Barron's and he consults for about seven wineries. He geeked it up a little bit, which is kind of cool. And it was a good interview, I thought. Anyway, watch it. Let me know what you think. So this is the Alonja Red. Three grape varietals make it up. It, it rolls in at seven or eight bucks. Seven ninety nine, eight dollars $8. Crazy. Let's see what we get on the nose. Right off the bat, I get a little bit of a vanilla mocha. Almost like a red plum thing going on. A little minerality. We get like an earthiness coming through, like a little bit of crushed rock, a little bit of dust. And a little bit of red currants. So interesting nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. Red plums come through for sure. I get the uh, currants coming through. It's simple. It's eight dollars. Doesn't have a lot going on, but it's still delicious. Got a little bit of acidity going through. Almost get like a cassis element on the backside. Definitely a crushed rock element coming through, beginning to end. It has a nice brightness to it, but yet it has the fruit. The red plums come through. Everything comes through really nicely. Real dusty on the finish, which is interesting. Certainly a food wine. With that, what I like about this, with that acidity, you're talking, you know, I mean, it, it'll go. You need some grilled meats. You need something to go with this. Nothing too spicy, nothing too big, but this will match up nicely with those things. I'm even getting a little bit of like a, a red flower, like violets coming through. And you know, when you swallow it, definitely that dusty crushed rock element comes through. For those of you that like a little bit of old world style wine, which is this is, but you want a little bit of that kind of bright, kind of red plum current thing going on, I would go here, eight, you know, eight bucks. 
It's a good value, excellent value, good bottle of wine. I'm going C plus, B minus on that for the price. It's excellent. Above average, for sure. Let's move on to the next one. From the same winery, Esparero. Uh, this is the uh, Alentejo. We already said that. Both of these are from the Alentejo region. This is the Herdade do Esparero 2012 Monte Vejo. And it is uh, Alentejo, Portugal, of course. And it gives the blend right on the front. It is 40% Aragonez. 35% Trincadera, 20% Tariga Nacional, and 5% Syrah. Again, many of those grapes you probably have not heard of. This one rolls in at $12, another excellent value. Let's see what we get on the nose. Ooh, this gets into that stinky leather thing that I like so much. I know that sounds weird to you guys, but I don't know what it is about, usually when a wine has a little bit of that funkiness to it on the nose, it's usually really good on the palate. So, you know, I know he's like, stinky, why would we like stinky? Well, I, I get it. But at some point in your wine career, as you develop along and you start tasting different wines, you know, it's like, the, it's like I, I like it to coffee. I remember the only way I could drink coffee when I was younger was I had to put three or four sugar cubes in there, a ton of cream, then I could drink it, but eventually, Eventually, I graduated now I just drink a black. I even like an occasional espresso every once in a while. So, you know, you, our palates change and they develop after time. Doesn't mean you have a better palate than somebody else. I'm not saying developed in that way. I'm saying it develops into different things. You'll find from time to time that you like one wine a lot and all of a sudden you don't like that wine anymore. You like another wine. It doesn't mean you're not going to go back to that other one. It just means your palate kind of evolves and changes as you go and you'll find you like certain things. A lot of leather currants on the nose. I'm getting a little bit of rose petal and violets. There's a sweetness, an underlying sweetness, maybe a little bit of vanilla. Let's see what we get on the palate. There's leather on this one. A nice brightness. It seems to me that Esperero wines have a nice acidic backbone, which is a good thing. It's definitely something when you're eating food, you're eating grilled meats and things like that, you want the acid. And it also helps in the development of the wine. I'm getting a lot of leather, rose petal, violets. I get a little bit of crushed rock. There's a brightness to this, a little bit of cranberry on top of the currants. Really nice wine. Leave it to the Europeans to make wines that go with food. Go figure. I mean, I'm just craving a stinky blue cheese right now or a hunk of uh, grilled steak. You know, it's just, it, it really is made for food. And it's really delicious. I mean, I could sit there and drink this solo. I wouldn't call this a cocktail wine completely. But for barbecue, for hot dogs, for pizza, for anything you're doing during the summer, what a great wine for 12 bucks. Both of them, actually. I'm going to go BB minus on this one. There is even a little bit of red licorice, which is really intriguing. A lot of crushed rock on the finish. I like that one. I'm going to go more B minus B on this one. B minus B. This is an eight box. It's got to be B minus. I mean, it's above average. A little simple. That's okay. Eight dollars. This one, twelve dollars. A little bit more going on. Actually, a lot more going on. But the same token, B B plus. I'm going with that one. Let's move on to the next one. Totally. Switching gears. 
I'm going to Washington State. Why? I have no idea. I was just thinking barbecue. Actually, I was trying this earlier. I thought, you know, i got to throw this on here. Because this is Book Walter's label that they do called Notebook Red. They do not give the blend on this, which, of course, I, you know, I've... You know how I feel about that. Hey, that's been a long time since the cat's been in the episode. Pretty cool. Jinx has to go outside. So, it says multiple vintages, vertical blending with multiple grape varietals. Horizontal blending. Very interesting. So, this is non-vintage. It looks like it says Washington 4 non-vintage. I mean, is it 4 vintages? Don't know. Now, the... Here's my personal opinion about non-vintage non wines. You have to keep trying them. Because they're non-vintage, sometimes that blend, blend will change prior to a newer year. So you have to keep trying. For instance, Book Walter Notebook about two years ago was phenomenal. I loved it. Sold a ton of it. Then I tried it again and it went... I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I don't know. Maybe they threw a lot of the 2011 vintage, which was very trying. It did not live up to snuff. So, now we got to try it again. Give it another shot. Let's see what we get on the nose. Lots of black licorice, blackberries. Get a little plum action going on. It's, it's very perfumed. I noticed on the back it said... Uh, Alcohol is 13.8. They can fudge 1% and get away with it. I'm thinking just on the nose, it might be a little higher than that. I get a little dusty element, which is intriguing. But the first thing that comes to my mind on this nose is, is uh, blackberries and black licorice all over the nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. A little sloppy there. Got to be careful I'm wearing khakis. Very smooth. Very polished. A little on the simple side, but very delicious. I would go 10 in the delicious category on this one. Lots of blackberries. Lots of black licorice. Go figure. I'm getting a little bit of plum action and a hint of currant on the back side. But that black licorice element, and I'm not talking, you know, like sweet black licorice. Just that flavor of black licorice. Hopefully I'm coming through with you on that one. This has a really grapey component to it, which is interesting. We said, I remember when I read a poster one time and said, why do wine writers stay away from the word grape? It tastes like grapes. It is grapes. Yes, I even find myself avoiding that. Now, the sales rep that dropped this off, there, thank you, Matthew, for doing that, put three prices on here. I'm, this is rolls in about $12. Average, 12 bucks. For 12 bucks. Smooth, delicious. This could be a cocktail wine. This could be a food wine. Definitely have this with hot dogs, pizza, hamburgers. Great hamburger wine. Absolutely phenomenal hamburger wine. Cool bottle. Hey, by the way, I forgot to zoom in on these. Here is the notebook, by the way. Cool bottle. Book Walter does this label. There you go. Around $12 to $13. Let's go back to the Mon Monte Vejo. There you go. For those of you that didn't see that label, there you go from... Esperero Winery. God, you think I would have never, you think I never did one of these videos before. And then here is the Alondra. The little $8 bottle. B, B minus. B minus. B, B plus. I'm going to go B, B plus on Notebook too. Excellent bottle of wine. All really reasonable. 
all perfect for barbecuing, for picnics, all that stuff. You know, summer's here. We're on to all that things we do on the backyard with family and friends. We're looking for relatively inexpensive breads that we can take to the party. These all fall in that category. Thanks for watching. Cheers. And here's to keeping the stomp out of wine.